Yes, hello everyone. Welcome back to WD18, the Watford fan channel. Welcome to a transfer video. I think it's the first proper transfer live stream of this of this window. There hasn't been a lot of activity from Watford. The first signing of this uh, January transfer window was made today. Uh, Rob Elliott signing on a free transfer, the 34-year-old goalkeeper. We're discussing him. We're just uh, discussing James Lee Saliki. Got Glenn Murray, Kika Feminia, Craig Dawson, James Garner. And potentially a late move for Ismail Asar, where we think that's going to happen. There hasn't been many concrete links this window, but we'll be all we'll be discussing that in today's live stream. As always, Sam and Elliot are back for this one. Um, and it was really interesting, Elliot, because we, we, we posted something on WD18 about uh, James Leah Saliki from, from, from Elliot. He managed to get a source, a source of, who was near to the deal and near to the player, which we'll discuss in a moment. But, but Sam, first off, how are you feeling at the moment with the lack of transfer activity overall from Watford? Is it is it concerning for you at all, or is it understandable in, with the current situation of the market? I think it's a bit of both, uh, to be honest with you. I think it's really understandable why we're not bringing anyone in. Obviously, our finances are really limited um, into, uh, because of the pandemic going on, and obviously. Uh, a lot of players on big wages still from when we dropped out of the Premier League and obviously there's Brexit going on as well. So I can kind of understand why there hasn't been a lot of deals coming in so far. Um, however, I still find it a bit concerning, uh, particularly in the striking areas, because to be honest, I don't think we are good enough in that area to go up uh, or even get near to kind of those areas. Um, and I mean, less so in the central midfield uh, positions now with Saliki, you know, perhaps coming in and also Chalabar coming into into form. So it's kind of a bit of both. So while it's understandable, I still am a bit concerned. I actually forgot Zinkanagel was signed on January the 1st. So it's oh, probably the that, second yeah. time. The, the <laughs> thing is, that feels like a long time ago for some reason. Long time it, ago. So I completely mm. forgot. So I do apologise. Uh, Rob, Elliott, Rob Elliott is our second uh, first team sign. There's been a couple of under 23s come in. Um, I'll tell you what, Elliot, first off, Rob Elliott uh, has it's been confirmed. I think it was confirmed by a number of sources the other day, but officially by the club. Um, I think it's a good move for all parties. What, what do you make of the deal and just your initial thoughts on it? Yeah, I agree. It's low risk. I, I doubt he's on very high wages. He's he's a pretty good keeper from, from all accounts. I remember at Newcastle, he was, he was pretty good. I don't know if he's the same kind of goalkeeper. It's you know It was only three or four years ago that he was really at his best. And it doesn't. We still don't know really if he'd come in as as back up to Backman, or you know, because then he'd be third choice, or, or whether he'd be instead of Backman. I do doubt that though. And yeah, I just think it's low risk, high reward, and it might be that he might transition into the coaching staff when he retires. That might be the incentive from the club, because I think he had quite a couple. I think he had three or four clubs that were also looking at him. So I think it's a good move from us to bring him in and, and have an experienced head to help out the likes of Backman and Parks and Baptiste, who, who are coming up through the ranks. Yeah, it's an interesting point from Elliot, isn't it, Sam, about where Rob Elliott fits in with this Watford squad. Does he go straight in as first choice? Does he Is he back up to Daniel Backman? Obviously, with Foster out with quite a nasty finger injury at the moment. Where, where does he fit in in this Watford squad, do you think? At the moment, I think I think backup goalkeeper. I think Backman, at the moment, is undroppable, regardless of whether Foster's in the squad or Elliot. It, it's on... It's, uh, it's, it's uh, when I say Elliot now, it's like I'm referring to the old Elliot. Elliot, Elliot you <laughs> mentioned on your Twitter, didn't you, about Murray's out the door and Elliot's come in. <laughs> yeah, it's the good. Elliot Murray transfer window. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, sorry, that, that, that's what we should name the video now, just the yeah, Elliot yeah, Murray yeah. transfer show. Um, <laughs> no, I just, um, I, I feel like it's a really good bit of business because. Uh, while it's, you know, Foster is probably going to be um, touch and go with his injury now for the rest of the season because it does seem pretty bad. And particularly as a goalkeeper, you kind of have a broken finger. It's an experienced head in the dressing room. Honestly, no harm in that. And also something I saw on Twitter as well is that while it's incredibly far-fetched, we do not want to end up in another Jack Bonham situation. And I guarantee you that's in the back of the minds of the Potsos in case, you know, if because Batman's one injury away from us having to put Adam Parks in goal, and that's not me saying Adam Parks is a bad goalkeeper, he's incredibly young. But having Rob Elliott in there, he's a he's an experienced head, he's been there and done that with Newcastle in the championship before. So, really good bit of business from us, I think. Yeah, I, I think so. There were some people, some of the reaction on Twitter was, Oh, is, our, is it going to be our own, yeah. uh, only signing after Zinkanago? It's a third choice keeper, but I think you're, you're completely right in that respect, Sam. about the Jack Bonham situation. I'm sure that's in the back of the mind of the Potsos. And we mentioned it in the match traction the other day, didn't we, about the running we've got. And if, yeah. say, what for whatever reason, and I'd hopefully not, Backman got an injury, 
Adam Parks had to come. It'd be a lot of pressure on him. And I think Leventhal, Adam Leventhal um, referenced it in his Athletic article that this isn't to say Adam Parks isn't, you know, isn't um, liked by Watford and he's not rated because he is. I think he's a very talented goalkeeper. I think you, you only see snippets of him in the warm-ups, but clearly he's, he's, he's pretty good. Um, but I've, like, it's clear the club rate him. And, and to be fair, Elliot, do you, do you think actually this is just a clever bit of business, really? It, for, as we said before, because I think he's 34 years of age. He was at Newcastle for nine nine years, I believe. He's got a, f- a fantastic rapport with, with the with the Newcastle fans, uh, and actually, he just seems like a really good pro as well. Uh, he seems like someone who really enjoys improving other players, from what I've been reading. So I I think that would be, if not better, that back, um, that Parks has got him in the dressing room, surely. Yeah, absolutely. At the risk of sounding delusional, but if you compare us to Manchester City or Chelsea, you've got Scott Carson, who's in there as as a backup at City. You've got Rob Green, who was there as a backup at Chelsea for a time. And I've only heard positive things from their time at at those clubs, despite never making appearances. Apparently, they were only a positive influence. They they always helped the team. They helped the keepers out, particularly when they were younger keepers in the the club. And yeah, it's just, there's no downside to this deal. And I hope that we don't have to call upon him. But if we do, I think we've, we'll all have faith in him. And we'll know he'll be a good solu- solution to, a, to an injury problem if, if one arises. Yeah, and it, it seems like he's got something to prove as well, Rob Elliott, um, because obviously it's a deal to the end of the season. So he'll be looking to get another extension on. And then there's the whole situation with if we do get promoted out of the, the championship, looking a bit far, further ahead, but then does he stay? There's a lot of other factors. But Rob Elliott has signed for Watford till the end of the season. Um, that's a confirmed signing. As I said, the second signing of this transfer window. We've had Philip Zinkenagel, um, Rob Elliott, and one that's been rumoured, Sam. Uh, there's been a lot of rumours in the past week or so about James Lear Saliki from Wren. Um, he's not getting a look in at the moment at Wren's. Um, I think he's a peripheral figure. Uh, he obviously knows Ismail Assar from his time there. I think there was uh, someone posted today a goal that he scored in the um, a goal that Ismail Assar scored from a James Lear Saliki cross. I think it was against Arsenal in the Europa League. Um, so the two guys know each other. I guess it would be support for for Ismail Assar in the dressing room as well. But how lo- how confident are you that this deal can go through? From what we're reading at the moment, just as a what fan, how confident are you that this can actually go through? Yeah, I am. I am relatively confident. I have. Uh, I've become much more confident ever since uh, our, our very own in the know, Elliot, uh, oh, spoke to it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, in the know. <laughs> it's, uh, no, but I am confident. It's a very, it's a very Pozzo like signing. Um, like obviously, we have all these young players from you know South America coming in, and also we have um, perhaps more experienced players coming in. But it's very much like a peripheral player as you say from the French League coming in and hopefully can make an impact and I know a lot of people in the comments are saying mention Kapu, mention Kapu but I I did say that while Chalabar is coming into form (laughs) we do need we do need that area still strengthened so I really hope that this still does go through. Yeah absolutely Uh, Elliot maybe do you want to summarise the situation with Saliki um you were told a few things by a player close to the situation at the moment. What, what is what is the situation for maybe people who don't know about about um, Lear Saliki at Rennes? So he's played, I think, 10 games this season. He he featured in the Champions League, particularly against Chelsea. People might remember him in midfield alongside Eduardo Camavinga, who is touted to move to Real Madrid or Barcelona for £90 million. Pounds. So he's, he's in good company in, in the midfield at Rennes. Uh, so um, Saliki's moving to Watford, so who's winning? <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's, yeah, it's the burner know. barrel of Wenzel's outside the <laughs> trying. I, I know which one I'd be picking. <laughs> so, sorry, Ellie, go on, mate. Yeah, so he's, I think he may have picked up a knock at points and, and I think that might have harmed his chances of, of being first choice central midfielder. So he's not had the best of time this season so far. Um, I spoke to a source very briefly. This is not like I've, I've had extended contact with someone. But the clubs were talking and then I, I asked for an update today and it turns out that an offer has been made. It was a loan, in his words, with an automatic buy, which I can only assume is an obligation to buy rather than an option. And um, yeah, it's it, the clubs are discussing it. They're in talks. We know that they've had successful talks in the past with Ishmael Asar, as you've mentioned, but also with Abdelayda Kore. And yeah, it, it, it's looking good at the moment. It's still... I think it's still quite early days, which is slightly worrying because the transfer window is is edging closer to the deadline. But yeah, I think it's all positive so far. So I think we've just got to wait for for more confirmation. And you know, don't, don't look for my Twitter for um for any in the know stuff. You're better off looking at 
the watch observer Adam Leventhal because I get the odd thing here and there, but generally it's yeah, not much. No, that's all right. I, mate, I, th- I think it's brilliant work. And, and if you haven't checked out Elliot's um, stuff on on socials, make sure you do go and drop him a follow as with Sam as well. At is just below their their uh, their faces. Um, Elliot, I wanted to just ask you. It, it seems to me from someone who's seeing it from the outside a little bit. Uh, Leah Saliki wants the move to happen from from reports in France. Um, you know, he I think he's had offers from Genoa. There was another team I forgot, but there was, there was it was elsewhere across Europe. Um, and it seems like he wants the move. He's happy to move to Watford regardless of the deal, whether it's permanent, whether it's loan with an ob- obligation to buy. Um, how confident are you that this can happen? Just not not in terms of what you know about the deal, but just in terms of how confident are you as a fan that this can happen with with not a lot of time remaining in the transfer window. I'm very confident. I've I've read a couple of the reports that so it was it was Genoa and it was Anderlecht and Porto were in from a few months ago. He would rather come to England. That was what all of the all of the reports have suggested. And he's very interested in the move to Watford. So it feels like everything's going in the right direction. He seems like the right fit for Watford. He's not much of a Kapoo type midfielder, but he's a he's a ball carrying midfielder and he's what we need and, and he could be good in that four four two. So I think Everything's looking good at the moment. Obviously, Fingers there crossed. could be a stumbling block wherever, but but so far so good. And mm. yeah, I, I think it could happen. Yeah, just 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 to elaborate on where, where he fits to this team, um, Elliot. From from what you know, so it's a four. He'd fit in a four four two in in the central midfield. Can he play out wide? Can he? I don't know. I don't know a lot about him. I was. What, what, what do you know about the play in terms of his kind of uh, ability? I'm not much of an expert on on Ligue 1, but yeah, it, it does seem that he's a. Uh, He's not the defensive midfielder. He's not quite the attacking midfielder. He is a proper central midfielder. So perhaps he would be in there instead of someone like Cleverly if we were looking to rotate. Obviously, that wouldn't be the case every week. But yeah, just a rotation option for the likes of Cleverly, maybe Hughes as well. I think he's quite creative. I think he's quite good at, at providing the two options and, uh, and playing it out wide. But aside from that, I can't say I've, I've seen too much of him or, or I know too much of him. But it just looks like a, a very good signing and one that mm. we should all be pretty hopeful for. Sam, just in terms of the, the bigger picture, really, with the Watford squad at the moment, would, would, before maybe going into this transfer window, did you think we needed another midfielder in there, honestly? Yeah, I, I did think so, particularly after, what, the first day when Kapu left. I thought, it was, uh, I thought it was really important for us to get a midfielder in. Perhaps not as important as the striker, which I thought became the immediate priority as soon as the window opened. Um, but... Yeah, I, I, I did think the midfield needed addressing, but it really does help the fact, though, that Cleverley's in a really good bit of form. Hughes appears to be now coming close to full fitness. I, I wouldn't say he's fully there yet, but he's very close to it. And uh, and Chalabar's coming into form now as well. So that's definitely helping the situation. But yeah, it'll be a really, really good signing for us. Yeah, let's have a little, little, little look through the comments. Uh, Rudy also agrees with you. Uh, Sam Saliki would be a great signing. Um, it's be interesting what if the deal does go through, what deal it will be. It seems like a loan with an obligation to buy, which is yeah, it, it's an interesting one. Uh, Lewis, thank you, first time viewer. Uh, make sure you do subscribe to the channel so if you do enjoy the video. Um, Elliot, don't remind Sam of Capu. I will tell you what, Sam, there's a lot of Capu chatting here. <laughs> do you know what? it's mental though? How 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 it feels so slow this window though because Capu left this window and it feels like months ago now. I, think that... I forgot what I was in Canago. I just completely. Mental. Yeah, it's yeah, been, exactly. You know, I mean, we played we played Swansea this like, we played Swansea this month, and that was absolutely ages ago. Like, wow, yeah, absolutely crazy. mental. I mean, I mean, yeah. just just uh, just plug in quickly. Uh, and it's the end of January now, and we're ending the Player of the Month vote on our Instagram soon. So make sure to go and vote if you haven't yet. There we go. Sorry. Link in the description to the Instagram. <laughs> make sure you go and check it out. I think uh, Sierra Alta is winning. Yeah, Sierra Alta. Yeah. Quite mild. Well, you know what the chili fans are like on, on Instagram. They go, <laughs> they go crazy for Sierra Alta. Um, so make sure you do get involved uh, in, on Instagram at WD18fans. Um, but yeah, it seems pretty positive about Saliki. And, and fingers crossed that does go through. And there's maybe some more updates from, coming from France or uh, from some of the major Watford sources in the coming days about that one before the deadline. Now, right, we'll move on to um, maybe one more incoming. Uh, Simon mentioned in the chat, bring back Vidra. Um, I think there was some more Vidra chat in the comments as well. <laughs> Sam, it feels like there was an inquiry. It feels like that inquiry has fizzled out and it feels like he's going to be staying at Burnley. Is that, do you think that's yeah. the problem? Yeah, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I really don't, I can't see this happening. I know I made the promises about going in the pond and buying the Vidra <laughs> shirt, but I just can't see it happening. I thought there was about a day or so where I was thinking, do you know what, there, there might be something here. But 
I think particularly last night, he came off the bench for Burnley. I don't know if anyone watched uh, Burnley against Villa. He was absolutely fantastic when he came on. They were 2-1 down. And within five minutes, they were 2-1 up, 3-2 uh, up after a really good bit of hold-up play from him. And a lot of Burnley fans are saying, I hope we start. And they don't, I hope he starts. And they seem really hopeful of keeping him now. So I can't see this still happening unless we see a miraculous turnaround in the last bit of the window, which will include Burnley having to bring someone in first. Yeah, it, it just seems there's so many factors, Elliot, that are out of Watford's control that this deal can happen. Not not to mention about how it kind of ended with Watford as well, not in great terms. Are you the same as Sam, just just can't see it happening? Yeah, I, I can't see it happening. It's I think Vidra's a good plan B for them. If they, I, I don't want to just limit Burnley to saying that they, they just hoof it and they just play it long or, or they just play it up to the likes of Chris Wood. But mm. there is a lot of that. There's a lot of playing it up in the air and Vidra allows another option on the ground. Like Sam says, he held it up quite well last night. You know, he's clearly very skillful, very talented, and I think it would be poor from Burnley to then let him go because he does provide a good alternative option for them. I don't think he'll go anywhere. The fact that he played last night, I know he only came off the bench, but the fact that he played last night with it being so late in the window might suggest that, that there's not really any movement going there in terms of him leaving the club. Something might happen in the summer. I don't. Again, I don't think it would be Watford-related, but I think he could be off in the summer. He might go abroad. I know mm-hmm. there's interest really in Berlin in Germany. But yeah, it's yeah. I have no optimism whatsoever that this could go through. And um, it's a shame because I really like Vidra. But yeah, I think we're going to have to move on from that one. <laughs> so Sam actually had an announcement or a plan for the Millwall game where no. Deedy scores, lifts his top up and says Vidra announced on, the, on his best. <laughs> that would be, I'll tell you what, the reaction on no. Watford Twitter would be absolutely immense if that one went through. Uh, however, as, as the guy said, it does seem unlikely. As Caroline uh, puts in the chat, whilst we may like to see Vidra back, can't see it happening after he left us. I think that's the, I completely agree with you, Caroline. It does seem very yeah. unlikely. Um, I tell you what, we'll move on to some outgoings. Um, so we mentioned Rob Elliott's come in, Leah Saliki's in, in discussions with Watford, um, Vidra unlikely. Outgoings. Now, Glenn Murray, uh, this has been one that's kind of rumbled on, I think, throughout the January transfer window. He was actually on Five Live again last night, uh, Glenn Murray. Um, <laughs> I think someone tweeted that he's had more appearances on Five Live than he has for Watford this season, which is... Uh, so as so is, so is Troy was on radio duty as well, so it's nice yeah. to see our strikers have more radio appearances <laughs> than goals this season. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what, um, I'll tell you what, uh, Elliot, Glenn Murray, is it... Is it fair to suggest, and we mentioned this before, but it does seem a little bit weird with the lack of goals we have up front. And I'm not saying Glenn Murray could hit the ground running if he comes in, but with, there's a proven championship goal scorer here who is towards the latter stages of his career and we haven't given him a go. It, I just find it really, I find that situation really odd and really odd in the way Watford have handled it. What were your thoughts on the whole Glenn Murray situation? Because it, it's bizarre. It is bizarre. I was about to say the exact same thing. It is a really <laughs> bizarre situation it, and it doesn't really make sense. I don't know if it's a system thing, whether they wanted someone that is perhaps more energetic, more active in the press, someone like Andre Gray. And if they don't want to have him be a Dini replacement as he supposedly came in for, then that limits his options. I think the managerial turnover might not have helped. It might be that as soon as he was beginning to endear himself to Ivic, Ivic then leaves. Chisco comes in. He he's told already, as you would be, any any head coach that comes into Watford, Dini is the guy. We know he's he's the Watford legend. And yeah, I I, I think he would have been very, I think everyone would be very surprised if Dini didn't start the first few games under Chisco or, or at least played a huge part in the first few games under Chisco. So Murray's got this small window of opportunity where he can stay and try and prove himself where he's currently training alone and and looks like a move likely or he can, you know, he can go and Nottingham Forest are interested. The difficulty there is that they've already got five low knees on their books and that's the maximum you can have. So they would have to bring him in on a permanent transfer for Brighton. I don't know how willing Brighton are to do that. I think he is in the last year of his contract, so it shouldn't be too difficult. But Chris Hewton knows Glenn Murray from his time at Brighton. There's Anthony Knockhart that's there as well. It was something I mentioned a little earlier in the month that it just makes sense to have him go to, to Forest, especially when they lack in goals sometimes. They might want an alternative to Lyle Taylor. So, yeah, I think it just makes sense that it all ends here for, for Watford and Glenn Murray. Mm. Yeah, I think I think that's bang on, um, Elliot. I, I, it's really interesting with the Murray situation. There seems to be, again, similar to, the, um, <laughs> si- similar to other deals that we've seen in the past. There's so many mitigating factors. And as you mentioned, Elliot, the five loans, I think they've got to sign on a permanent basis, but then do Forrest want to sign a 37-year-old striker? That, that's got to be weighed up. Um, 
Sam, it, but just from a Watford point of view, it does look like that Glenn Murray's going to leave. Um, and even if he does stay at Watford, I don't think we'll see him in a Watford shirt again. He's played five times. A cameo against Wickham is probably the highlight. But it's, it's been it's been a really disappointing deal for Watford and one that hasn't materialised the way I thought it was going to. Because I remember uh, when, when he came in, I thought, you know, similar to the Rob Elliott signing in the sense that it was a shrewd bit of business. You know, he's got championship experience. He knows what it takes to get out of the championship. And yeah. for whatever he'd bring on the pitch, what he brings off the pitch as well was so valuable in terms of what he'd bring to the dressing room. And we mentioned that before with key members in the squad. But for you, it, are you disappointed with the way this deal has, has panned out? Because I, I, I'm actually quite frustrated that it hasn't maybe worked a bit better. And, and maybe we've got, we haven't seen any of him, absolutely nothing of him. It, it just seems really frustrating, the whole situation. Yeah, it, it's really weird because... On the one hand, we've mentioned this before, but I was happy when we signed him in the knowledge, sorry, not in the knowledge, but with the thought that Troy Deeney was going. And I think that if Troy had gone, it would have been really good. We would have seen much, seen much more of Glenn Murray, could have offered that plan B, that experience head in the dressing room and that leader. Um, so, so it would have been really good if Troy had gone. Um, however, the fact Troy stayed meant that we didn't really need two similar players in there like that. I know Murray doesn't like to drop deep as much as Troy, but still it's kind of, you know what I mean? It's kind of like the similar... Like a more experienced prior. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. yeah, like not as much pace, just more finisher, basically. And I'm frustrated it didn't work out simply because the strikers we had were going for, a, a, still are arguably going for a really, really bad spell. And you have to question whether Glenn Murray could do much worse than them. Because it's only he could only do it better, and I know he missed that chance against Wickham, but he pretty much showed more movement then than all our strikers have showed this season, and the intelligence he sh- he showed to get there, and perhaps with sharpness he will be putting those away. But it's all in hindsight now, and I'm just I'm disappointed for him more than anything else because I thought it was a good move for him as well. Yeah, it, it, it seems like it's one of the the last. Um, well, I think it might be one of the last seasons in Glenn Murray's career. So I guess for him, it's disappointing. It's kind of fizzling out in the in the sense that it has. We'll move on to some other uh, news, Elliot. Um, and a bit of news released by Ryan Gray at the Watford Observer this morning about uh, Kika Femenia, and he said Granada, Real Valad. Dolid uh, and Villarreal have all approached Watford about signing Kika Femenia during the January transfer window. Um, but Femenia has said he's happy to finish this season at Watford, which I thought was a massive boost. And I think the reaction from Watford fans was like, you know what, brilliant from Kiko. I think he's in his right to really look for a move away because of, number one, how good he's been this season. But also just been one of the most consistent performers, I think, since he's come in, to be fair. And uh, for you, what uh, it's a huge boost for me. I, d- I don't know what you made of that, but it, it was just a really encouraging signs that Kiko's gone, you know what, he's happy at Watford, he's committed himself to the rest of the season and he's not going to have his head turned. I just thought it was really encouraging news this morning. Yeah, really encouraging. He's been absolutely vital to this season. We've had to push him out at left back at times. People don't remember sometimes that Ken Summer wasn't always the left wing back option that we had. We often turned to Kiko Femini and, and asked him to play on the on the less favoured left side. He's He's played so many games. I don't know how he's not exhausted. Um, yeah, he's, he's been such a huge part. He's played so well. He's going forward. He's a fantastic player. Um, going back, he's uh, <laughs> had a couple of technical difficulties. Yeah. But, just, but yeah, yeah, going back, he's yeah. uh, very good as well. We were just talking about how great Kiko Femenia is. No, no, you know what happened? <laughs> I, I, I just read the article again and I just had to go off and, you know, I was just having a pint just to celebrate Kiko yeah. Femenia. <laughs> <off> and, uh, <laughs> I'll come back. Elliot, continue the point. Sorry, connection difficulties, fellas. <laughs> so, yeah, going forward, fantastic. But he's also very good going back, which is, is quite rare in a, in a lot of fullbacks these days. And, yeah, he's just been a huge part. I think if you get an offer from Villarreal, few few players would turn that down. We know Etienne Capoue didn't. We know Pervis Estupinian didn't. So so it's great that that he did turn that down. Granada are doing very well as well. They're playing Europa League football. Luis Suarez didn't turn that move down. And Royal Valladolid are pretty good as well. So he's turned down some pretty good clubs to to stay at Watford in the Championship at a club that's not a shoe in for promotion. So. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it is really encouraging news, isn't it, Sam? I'm buzzing that Kiko stayed, to be fair, because as Elliot mentioned, he's been yeah. superb this season. Like, How good has he been? Because I think I'd argue he's player of the season. I don't know about you, but it seems he's just been he's been top draw. And I think his commitment yeah. this season, something which I think other players, as Elliot mentioned, not to say, I don't think Kapu was not 100%, well, I don't think he was 100% committed, but... He's clearly wanted to move. Estu Pinyan, Luis Suarez, you know, these guys moved on. But Kiko's made it pretty clear he wanted to stay at Watford. He wants to give it a season before reassessing his options in the summer. How much of a boost is that for, for Watford this season? 
Abs- absolutely huge. I mean, you ask if he's been player of the season, I think, by quite a mile as well, simply because his performances have been, you know, he's been a solid 8 or 9 out of 10, I think, in every single game he's played. Uh, I think there would have been perhaps a, a shout for Ken Semmer, but recently, uh, whether it's, you know, we don't know the reasons behind it, but his form has dropped off and he's currently not in the side. Um, so, so for me, by a mile, he's been player of the season. I do have a feeling, though, that he will go at the end of the season if we don't go up. And, and understandably so, because he's been absolutely phenomenal. For me, he's Premier League quality. I don't understand. I, I look at all of these championship team of the season so far or halfway. I, I really don't get why he's not in any of these teams. And he seems to go under the radar. And I think that really suits him. And I think he sets the example for so many players in this squad, particularly, you know, he's got Jeremy and Gak is having to learn from him. And that there's no one better to learn than from a committed Kiko Femenea who seems to be our best player every single week. So fantastic that he's staying for the rest of the season. Yeah, it is big, big news, especially with the teams interested in him. I'll tell you another player, another player on loan, um, who's been linked with a, with another move to another championship club is James Garner, Elliot. And it's QPR, uh, reported by Sam Routledge, I think. Uh, he works for TalkSport. He's a QPR kind of, uh, I think he's a QPR journalist, to be fair. And he, he's very he's very reliable on, on that, sort of, that sort of news. Um, it seems... It seems with Tom Carroll's injury, Elliot, that QPR are looking to bring in a midfield. James Garner's linked. It seems that it's unlikely, and the chance I think that Sam Rowley's described it was a, was slim. Um, do you could you see that going through, or do you think it's getting to the point now where it should it probably would have been done if that was going to happen? Yeah, I think it's one of those ones that if if we were having this conversation on the second of January, then perhaps something more would have happened, not just with QPR but with another club. QPR do on another midfielder and they did just sign Stefan Johansson on loan from Fulham. But I think the, the understanding is that they want another one in. And um, yeah, there was a little bit of interest for James Garner. I don't think it's going to happen. I think it's a bit of a faff, to be honest with you, with Man United having to cancel the loan, renegotiate the QPR. Um, we, we don't know for sure that Watford would be completely happy with, because they might like having the cover of having James Garner. We know that he is a good cover option. He's, he's a good player that we could bring in if there are injuries, you know, he's, he may not be quite up to the standard of the likes of Hughes, Cleverly and Chalaber, but he's an option and you know he's certainly not a bad midfielder. So I just think it's unlikely to happen now. And and, and like Sam Routledge said, yeah, it's it's very slim. It does seem slim. I'll tell you what, Sam, another player who's been linked with a with a permanent move away is Craig Dawson. £3 million to West Ham. Uh, it seems like that deal is unlikely uh, because I think, Elliot, didn't you mention they needed to free up a... Uh, free up, um, a loan spot and they did that with because Jesse Lingard's coming in and they signed Ben Rama on a permanent which means they're not going to sign Craig Dawson on a permanent this window complicated exactly stuff yeah. but um, it looks like Craig Dawson is going to leave Watford uh, either this probably unlikely this month but in the summer three million pounds is that just is that just one Sam we just need to just move on from it's not been a great deal for Watford but he seems to be doing brilliantly at West Ham I mean he's completely rejuvenated his career yeah. he's like a different player oh, West Ham fans absolutely love him I've got a West Ham mate who's <laughs> like he's like how did you let him go he's absolutely incredible you know I think he's played seven games for them and they've won all seven games like they're on a massive winning run at the moment it's mental fair play um, to him I mean he's yeah, completely fair play he's, been, uh, career, he's, yeah. scored, he's, scored, he's scoring goals for them as well I mean we, we know ourselves how much for three years in the box overhead kick against Leicester um, <laughs> yeah, I forgot about that yeah oh, I uh, do, do you know what though you, you said we say this though I wouldn't swap it I wouldn't swap him for Cyril to choose the Kong or any of our centre-backs really um because mm. I mean he simply wasn't good enough for us and I think I think just take the three the three four million whatever it is except that it wasn't a good deal and move on because quite frankly any money we get in the football club at the moment is a bonus with the whole financial situation and what's going on in the world so good bit of business whether it happens now or in the summer and Elliot just to wrap up this uh, transfer video uh, thank you to everyone who's watching at the moment we really do appreciate it if you're watching it back then make sure you do leave a like on the video as well and, and subscribe to the WDA team we'll be looking ahead to a Monday's game against QPR uh, this weekend with a live match preview so make sure you come and join us and, and get involved in the conversation uh, Elliot with one player we've been linked to come in uh, one Rens player we've been linked to come in is Leah Saliki one player who hasn't been linked as much to leave Watford, a former Reigns player, is Ismail Assar. Now, can you see a late bid coming in for, for Saar? Whether that's a loan with an option to buy, whether that's a permanent basis, can you see that happening just straight up? <laughs> no. I, there might be like a, a, <laughs> Thank you for watching. 
<laughs> and they just did a cheeky one on deadline day last time out where they offered something like 20 million. I can't remember. It was The Athletic that reported on that. Something like a 20 million pound offer. And it was, was that Palace? It was in, in Staunton. It, yeah, I think it was Palace. Yeah, it was Palace. Um, you know, we might see something like that where Watford will yeah. just laugh it off and, and not even give it a second thought. But aside from that, I don't think any serious offer will come in for him. And I, I don't yeah. think he'd move now. I think it's too late in the window and I think it's yeah. it's not something that Watford would allow. Elliot, um, yeah. sorry, Sam, would you sell at any price, sir, at this point? Um, not for less than 25. Um, I'd, you I'd would say sell least... if, it, if it was over 25. Yeah, if it was over 25 million, I'd say I'd, I'd cash in now. I mean, it's annoying because we probably wouldn't get in a replacement, but that's with the risk that, you know, we don't go up and his price goes down even more. I do think, though, that um, that there will be a club who come in. And I think the words of Adam Leventhal lost uh, in the summer transfer window were test the waters for his minor side. And I think we will, I think we will see that again, whether it's, uh, you know, Man United or Liverpool or a club abroad, just, just seeing, you know, if we would, they've just bid a 20 million or whatever and see if we accept it. So I, I think we will see that, but it's highly unlikely that we will see Saar depart this window. Yeah, it does seem the later on it gets to the window, the more likely there's going to be a 20, 25 million bid coming from someone just to test the waters. I even think, I think it was on deadline day, Manchester United were looking at a, mm-hmm. a move for him as well. They, I think it was a few, few in, interested clubs, Liverpool, Man I United, thought, Crystal Palace. Yeah, I thought that would happen, the one to Man United. I genuinely did. I thought, um, because I remember it was the day before deadline day that Sancho's agent was like, he's not coming. And then it was deadline day and they had to get in that right midfielder. And I think they are still struggling on that side at the moment. Um, And I I think perhaps it's something that they could readdress in the summer, but incredibly unlikely this window. Yeah, I think I think it's probably probably will be. It'll be interesting to see what happens in the final days of the transfer window. But that's where we're going to wrap up this uh, Watford FC transfer news. Thank you to Sam and Elliot for joining me today to to discuss all the the latest updates. And if you want to make sure you follow all the Watford transfer rumours from from a number of different sources, make sure you do follow us at WD18 Fans on Twitter and Instagram. You can check out Sam and Elliot, as I mentioned, on their Twitters. The handles are just below um, as well. And don't forget to leave a like on the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe to WD18 for more Watford-focused content. And we will see you very soon for a QPR preview. Cheers, guys.